have been many statements. Hugo Baskerville was murdered by a big black beast. It was the biggest hound I've ever seen before. Oh, there you are, Dr. Mortimer. Did I frighten you? Oh, not at all. You'll never know how grateful I am that you're here, Watson. Mr. Holmes will be here soon. In roughly five, four, three, two. And one. You're always on time. Elementary, my dear Watson. Pleasure meeting you, Mr. Holmes. I'm Dr. Mortimer. I was a very close friend of Sir Charles Baskerville. He used to own this estate. Nice meeting you too, Dr. Mortimer. I do hope you enjoyed your walk around Griffin Mile. How do you know I've been there? Because I can see the mud on your shoes. That kind of mud is only found around the Griffin Mile. Rather, you certainly live up to your reputation. Judging by the color of the mud, you had to have been there within the last three hours. Amazing. I must advise next time you go, you shouldn't take your little dog with you. Why? And how do you know I have a dog? Because I can see the teeth marks on your walking stick. They should have seen them as well, so it must be a small dog. You take my breath away, Mr. Holmes. Elementary. You said you needed our help. I do. But is it related to the death of Sir Charles Baskerville? It is. The London newspaper said it was a heart attack. Not exactly. Perhaps this will explain. What is it? Hmm. It describes the origin of the curse of the Baskervilles. Curse? The curse says that all Baskerville descendants will be murdered by a big black hound. You don't believe that mumbo jumbo, do you? It's a fairy tale. Sir Charles believed in the curse. As I recall, Sir Charles only lived here for a few years. That's correct. Who looked after Baskerville Hall? The Barrymores. They are the housekeepers. And Bonnie Barrymore was the one who found the body. Was there any sign of violence on the body? None, but the expression on his face showed panic. Who performed the police autopsy? I did. Were there any more facts? I saw some marks around the body. What kind of marks? I saw footprints. A man's or a woman's? They were the footprints of a gigantic hound. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Excuse me, Dr. Mortimer. It's Sir Henry. We saw him from upstairs. Thank heaven. I'll be sure to tell him that Mr. Holmes and Mr. Watson are on the case. You, you will take the case, right? Hmm. Of course you will. I will do my best, but I must spend a few days in London. I have to leave Watson here to look after Sir Henry. Whatever you think is best. Excuse me, Mrs. Barrymore. May I ask you something? How long have you been in service at Baskerville Hall? I've been in service here most of my life. Then what about you? How long have you been in service here? Same as Mr. Stevenson was. Most of my life. I see. In fact, you all appear to Sir Charles as well. Correct. Interesting. Then you all must know the area pretty well. We all grew up here, Mr. Watson. In that case, you must know the locals. We do. Who lives in that house? Over there. Oh, that house belongs to Mr. Stapleton and his sister Kathy. I see. What does she look like? She's a very good looking woman. <laughs> and what about her brother? I've only met him once. Tracy Butterfly. Butterfly? Butterfly. Okay, so we have Mr. Stapleton's house over there. And what about that house over by the river? I better go to the kitchen. I must check on the pudding. Yes, sir. Yes, I must find the pudding. Actually, Mrs. Spawny Barrymore, was it? Who lives in the house by the river? Over there. My name is Laura Lyons. We're going to break my nephew's children into husbands. Why are you making such a mystery out of it? Miss Barrymore, Miss Barrymore, I have a few ideas for changing this old-fashioned decor. <coughs> oh, here you are. Sir Henry has recently arrived from the United States. Now that his uncle is no longer with us, he's the new owner of the estate, including the house. Ah, you must be Mr. Holmes. Oh, no, I'm Watson. What? Son. What son? Watson. Whose son? Your son? I am Mr. Sherlock Holmes. This is my colleague, John Watson. I still don't understand who the father is and who the son is. Anyway, nice to meet you, Mr. Holmes and son. <laughs> Whatever. May I ask you something? Where have you been this morning? Sure. Well, today the sun is shining, so I went for a walk around the mountains. All alone? No, I was with Kathy Stapleton. Why? Have you heard of the curse of the Baskervilles? Yes, but I don't believe in those stupid fairy tales. Oh, um, but today I saw this letter. A letter? From whom? Hmm. Words cut from the London Times newspaper. If you value your life, you will stay away from Baskerville Hall. Someone's trying to keep you away from Baskerville Hall. 
Was there an envelope or a stamp? No, I just found it in the mailbox. Interesting. Well, I'd better get going. My train leaves for London in about 20 minutes. But before I leave, I must leave you with some advice. Advice? You will report any news to my colleague here, Watson. And you must not go into the mountains alone at night under any circumstances. You won't leave in the curse, don't you? Something in the air that disturbs me. The air? What's in the air, Mr. Holmes? The scent of murder, Sir Henry. Murder. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Younger brother. Yes, he does, Emily. He is quite himself. 
Did you talk to him? Yes, a few days ago he came here asking for help and food. Every night we come down here to enlighten him with perfect review of alright and take him something to eat. You didn't tell us? Yes, we should have told you all this before. We know why Sir Charles was in the mountains the night he died. Well, he was going to meet a woman. I don't believe it. It's true, he does. He's trying to see her now. The morning is on his way. Please, please, as you are a gentleman, burn this letter after you read it and meet me by the mountain gate at 10 o'clock. What's the woman's name? No name. Oh, maybe the initials L L. If you don't have any more questions, I'd rather go to bed. And I'd like to retire as well. Me too. Good night. Please, please, as you're a gentleman, burn this letter after you read it and meet me by the mountain gate at 10 o'clock. L L. L L, what does it mean? Laura Lyon. Mr. Hall, what are you doing here? We thought you were in London. Why, that's exactly what I wanted you to. Oh my god, I've never been so happy to see anyone in my entire life. But if you were in London, where were you? Up here in the mountains. Since when? Well, since when? Since Dr. Mortimer invited us for tea, of course. And then you never left. Correct. So, how did it go? What did you find out? Nothing special except the two things. Now, are you listening? The first thing we did when you left was to figure out who lived nearby. There are two houses less than 500 meters away. One belongs to Jack Stapleton and his sister, Kathy. Jack is obsessed with butterflies and botany. Kathy is a charming lady. Seems our friend Sir Henry here gets on particularly well with her. I see. The other house is home to Laura Lyons. Initially, it didn't seem Miss Lyons had anything to do with Sir Charles's murder. But now, Miss Barrymore has given us a letter that seems to have been signed by Laura Lyons. If the evidence is proven correct, it will implicate her as a direct suspect of Sir Charles's murder. Yes, and we saw the Barrymore sending light signals through the window. It seems that Sheldon McAllister, the murderer who escaped from prison, is their brother. That's why she was crying every night. Who was crying? Miss Barrymore. Some nights we could hear weeping sounds coming from the second floor. Yes, and after pressuring them into confessing, they told us everything. About how apparently the night Sir Charles died, they had found a letter in his office asking him to leave the house at 10 o'clock and meet someone by the garden gate. Is there anything else I don't know about? No. What about you, Mr. Holmes? What did you find out there? I will answer that question when the time comes. For now, I must ask you to remember my warning. You must not go up into the mountains alone at night. What's out there, Mr. Holmes? You know, don't you? There's more evil surrounding the Baskerville Hall than I've ever seen before. Listen. <laughs> it can't be. I fear it is. The horror that killed Sir Charles is haunting the mountains once again. Laura Lyons, I was expecting to see you here until tomorrow. Your memory deceives you. Please, 
So Charles, please, please, if you are a gentleman, put on this letter after you read it and meet me by the mountain gate at 10 o'clock. L.L. All right, I wrote it. I need you to just talk once again so I ask Jim to meet me. At an hour when the mountains were dark and deserted. What does it matter? I never went. Why? That is a private matter. It concerns only me. Do you admit that you made an appointment with Sir Charles at the place and time of his death? I did. Is that all you wish to tell me? Long ago, Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Mr. I'm going to look for Watson. <laughs> Thank you. 